Imagine if you could create engaging, thought-provoking question image posts for your social media, all automatically generated from your favorite blogs. Today we're diving into a brand new automation that I've created that automates question posts to your social media using AI and RSS feeds. My name is Andy O'Neill and I help entrepreneurs like you add time-saving automation to their business. Check out the description to subscribe to my newsletter and for a list of tools that I use. Also hit the thumbs up button and consider subscribing if you like content like this. All right, so what is an RSS feed? An RSS feed stands for really simple syndication. That name really doesn't mean anything other than the fact that it's easy to get data from a blog site or a website into our automations using an RSS feed. Now don't get hung up on this and don't go anywhere because this is not going to be a technical explanation of an RSS feed. This is just a high level overview. What you need to know is an RSS feed is simply a link that you can use in an automation tool to get content from a website. Now, sometimes websites make it easy and they put a link to an RSS feed as a part of the blog or maybe in the footer, but many sites don't do this. And so my friend Doug found this great Chrome extension called Get RSS Feed URL, and it works really slick and it does what its name is. Let me show you how to get an RSS feed over here on the Zapier blog. So I have this, pl this plug in here uh, and all I have to do is click it. And right here is the link, the RSS feed link to the Zapier blog. So all I have to do is hit copy URL. And now if I go to that URL, this is what an RSS feed looks like. It's not pretty, but it has all the data from the most recent blog posts that have been posted to the Zapier site. And we're going to use this by watching when they produce a new blog post. And when they do, we're going to run our automation to create a really slick question image for social media. So before we go any further, I want to show you an example of what one of these question images looks like. Here is one that I posted 22 hours ago uh, when I was prepping for this video. I kind of accidentally published it. And uh, but I was like, I'll go back and, and delete it later. And in about 10 minutes, it already had its first comment for this question. So I said, hey, I'm going to leave it up there. And since then, it's generated some back and forth conversations. This is a really great way to generate engagement on your social media. This is great. I'm using it on LinkedIn. You could obviously use it on Instagram, Facebook. There's lots of applications for this, but it's a really fun thing because Questions make people feel like they need to respond. And so that's why this generates uh, engagement. And you can ask questions that are about your niche or about the blog posts that you're using to generate these images. So to automate this process, we're going to use a platform called Make. This is a platform that connects different tools together and lets you automate processes. If you don't have a Make account, Take a look in the description. There's an affiliate link there. And if you use that, it won't cost you any extra, but it helps support me and my work on the channel. So I'm over here in Make. And real quickly, here is the scenario we're going to build. So I'm going to talk through it and then we're going to build it. So the first one here is to watch an RSS feed. I have that Zapier RSS feed link in my module. And that's going to be watching for new posts on the Zapier blog and bring those in and run this scenario. Next, I'm going to create a question. And I'm using the title of the blog post from the RSS feed as the basis for my question. I don't want to give it an entire article and have it try to figure out a question from that. I want a question related to the title. Now, the titles on Zapier's blog are pretty good. The best AI photo editors in 2024 Webflow versus Squarespace I might recognize that question from here. But if you're using an RSS feed from a site like Tim Ferriss's blog, his titles are names and a blog number. So that might not make a lot of sense to use that title to create a question. 
In that case, you might need to use the content of the blog or go find another blog to use. All right, next in our scenario is a little known module that I found a couple years ago, and I don't think it's very popular because I've never heard anybody else talk about it. It's for a site called HTML CSS to image. Dot com. This is a great little app for converting HTML and CSS into an image. And that's exactly how we're going to create the image for our automated post is by using HTML and CSS. Now, if you're not an HTML or CSS whiz, no problem. I'm going to provide that code via my Gumroad store. So check out a link in the description and you can get that HTML code. You can also get the blueprint to this scenario where you can just import it into your make account. So the way this works is I have some HTML here and it's a little hard to see because my size here is 1080 pixels by 1080. So I've created a table in HTML and I've given the right and left margins. And then I've created a table with my photo and name and any other information you want. And what happens is, depending on the height of the text, that name and picture auto centers because it's set to be center vertically. So it makes it really handy to do this. And the only thing that you need to do is you'll need to host two images on a web server somewhere, meaning you need to upload them to a server so they're available anywhere on the web. If you don't have a website, you probably have a friend that does. Just ask them if they can upload those two images and send you the links. It's going to be really low traffic because this is only going to retrieve those photos when you're generating an image. So one of the images is uh, an image of me. It's my mug there. And it's actually a square image that I have rounded with CSS and put a line around it. The other image is the background image to this table. So that's really easy to swap out of your HTML. You're just going to replace those images with your image. And then what's going to happen is we're going to merge in our quote right here as we run our make scenario and create this image. Once we have created our image, I'm using buffer to send that to social media. Why not send it directly to LinkedIn? You say, I'm glad you asked. The reason is, I can run multiple of these and send them to Buffer, and I can do two things. The first thing is I can go look at the image and the question and make sure it looks like something I want to post, or I can edit the post, and Buffer will drip them out to social media on a schedule that I choose. So I don't have to do one at a time right at the exact time. I can do it in batches, go look at them in batches and make sure I like them all, and then I just forget it and Buffer will push those out to social media on the schedule that I have given it. All right, I'm here in Make and I've created a new scenario. I've given it a name first. Don't forget to do that or it'll be really hard to find this later. And I'm going to start with my trigger. My trigger is going to be RSS and I'm going to do Watch RSS Feed Items. So the Watch RSS Feed Items will look for new posts every time this scenario runs. And I'm actually just going to run it once a day and get up to like 10 blog articles, maybe 20. Uh, I'm not sure how many they post in a day. We'll have to just watch that and see. So I'm going to paste the URL of my Zapier RSS feed right here. And then maximum number of return items. I'm going to leave that to one for testing purposes. I'm going to hit OK. Now it's going to ask me where I want to start. So I'm going to go down here. I'm going to click select the first feed item. And I'm going to go down to the bottom and pick the bottom feed item. And the reason is we'll have to run this a few times to test. So I don't want to have to do this step over and over again. So we actually have about 20 times we can run it here without telling it where to start again. So I'm going to hit OK. And let's just run that. All right, so we have a, an ID here, which is the URL, and we have a title. So let's go to the next step. We're going to go to Open AI, and we're going to choose Create a Completion. And so I'm going to pick the model here. We're going to try 40 Mini, and I'm going to add a message. And this is going to be a user message. And then I'm going to copy my prompt in here from my scenario I already built. If you go to Gumroad and purchase the Blueprint scenario and the HTML file, this will be included as well. I will include it as a separate prompt because it's more efficient to actually 
create an assistant in OpenAI and put all this text in there. Max tokens I'm going to set to zero. Scroll to the top. And that title, that's mapped correctly. So I've got some rules in here. And then I actually have some instructions for how to make really great questions uh, that have a, an unlocking phrase and a topic. So that that is all in there with some good examples as well. And so that's pretty lengthy. I would move that over to an assistant when you have a chance, just so it doesn't use up as many tokens here to run this. So I'm going to click OK and let's save and let's run this all right so we've run this and our question is 33 email marketing pra practices for 2024 so let's see what our question ends up being what is your number one email marketing tip you think everyone should know for 2024 that's a great question for linkedin and that should generate some great engagement so i i love where this is going so next we're going to do our html css create an image with HTML and CSS. So I've got my HTML CSS to image here and I'm going to click right here and I'm going to paste in the HTML. And you notice right here, this result is black because it's not mapped. It came from my other scenario. So I'm going to backspace over that and I'm going to click the result here for the question. Uh, right here, I've got a hashtag that I've included. You can include this, you can change it, you can do whatever you want. Uh, and I also have up here, here's my name, and then I have my handle for LinkedIn. So this should be all ready to go. I've got one more thing that I need to do. Right down here at the bottom, I'm going to give it a selector. So this selector is in the HTML, and what it tells uh, the module is what selector, or what box on the page to use as an image. Otherwise, it may get the entire page with white space. So we're going to do dot table which means that is a class with the label of table. All right, we're going to hit OK. And then I want to run this one, right? It's always great to run as you go. That way you don't have multiple things, uh, errors, compounding, and that kind of thing. So let's run this. All right, so this is run. Let's take a look here. 12 small business advertising ideas. Ooh, this is going to be good. What is your favorite way for a small business to advertise? That is so good. That's going to generate some really cool engagement. Now, right here, I get an image. So I'm going to triple click on that, right click and say, go to that image. All right. So here's our image. By the way, I created the background image on Canva. All you have to do is jump over there and create an Instagram post, which is 1080 by 1080 pixels. I just laid a background over it and export it out just like that. And that became my image that goes in the background of this table. Again, that image and this picture of you, if you choose to do that, will need to be hosted somewhere that's readily available on the web. So now if I zoom into this, you can see this is a really big, this is a 1080p square image. So, but I love how this looks. I love how it comes out, the white text on the dark background. Uh, so this, this is good. This is great. And we're going to continue on building our scenario. So next, we've got to get this into Buffer. So I'm going to add a module here. I'm going to go to Buffer. And I'm going to say Create a Status Update. All right, so I already have a connection. If you don't have a connection, you have to click Add and, and add that connection. I'm going to send this to LinkedIn. And the uh, text, I'm actually just going to put the question in the text there. And the next thing I'm going to do is there's options for where this can go in the queue. You can post it immediately, uh, which kind of defeats the purpose of using Buffer, but that's an option. Uh, you can add an update at the top of your queue, which means the next one that's published will be this one, or you can add it to the end of your queue, which I'm going to use, or you can actually give it a scheduled date and time. So if you want to create a scenario where it's always scheduling at a certain time, you can do that as well. But I'm going to the, add the update to the end of the queue that gives me time to go look at it, make sure it looks fine before it actually gets published out. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to attach a media to the update. So I'm going to say yes here. And just to note, this link, this is not the link to your image. The link to your image is down here. This link field is if you want somebody to be able to click on, an, on the image or a, a link associated with your post and go to a website. In theory, I could link to the Zapier blog from this. And if people clicked on it, they would go to that blog post. I'm not going to do that, but that is what that is for. 
So the title here, I'm going to do my result again as the title. And the description, I'm going to do daily question. And link to an image is going to be this image URL right here. And then I'm going to drag down and make that my thumbnail as well. Again, if you want it to link to something, you would put that right here. Otherwise, I'm done. And I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to save. We're almost done. We're going to push something here to buffer. And then I'm going to go ahead and push that to LinkedIn so we can see it live. So let's run this again. All right. So let's go look at our image again. What is your favorite way to use Instagram analytics to improve your post? That's that's a great it's a great post. And you can see here, this is three lines, but everything's centered vertically because that table that in, that holds my picture and name uh, actually will move based on the text. So if the text is longer, that'll slide up. If it's shorter, it'll go down. So that's always going to be centered vertically on that image. All right, let's jump in here to buffer. And I'm logged in here. And let's go down to the bottom because we added this to the bottom. And here is our post. So right now this is scheduled for August 26th at 1020 AM per my schedule. It's currently August 18th. So this will be a few days into the future, but I'm actually going to click share now and let's go look at it on LinkedIn. This looks great. I love how these look. We have the text up here, but uh, I, the text is short. So what happens is people will see that image right away. And the question is right on that image and uh, just looks looks great i love how this turned out obviously you can customize the background do whatever you want text color you can change you can put a different image in there uh, but this is a really easy way to create engaging content for social media in an automated fashion the only thing i would obviously encourage you to do is come over to buffer and take a look at the posts you're generating just lay eyes on them before they get published so you can make sure what's going out is a quality product to your social media. If you need help building this automation or any other make automation, visit my website. There's a link in the description. I'm happy to get on a Zoom call with you and help you one on one. It'll feel just like this. And if you want to see another video where I automated text post to LinkedIn, check out this video and you can see how that was done. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.